Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning everyone. Uh, today I would like to present about comparison of brain morphometry and seed-based analysis of resting state fMRI functional connectivity in Alzheimer's disease patients and healthy control in Klang Valley, a pilot study for Seminar Penyelidikan Belia Kebangsaan 2021. Uh, my name is Nur Hafiza bin Nur Mazmi. Uh, currently, I am PhD student in University Putra, Malaysia. Okay, this is my content of my presentation from the introduction until the references. The hippocampus is a Latin word meaning seahorse from Greek. It's a significant component of the human brain. The hippocampus is one of the first areas of the brain to be damaged in Alzheimer's disease. It's a memory-related neurocognitive illness which resulting in short-term memory loss or the inability to generate and maintain new memories. It starts with atrophy in the hippocampus of the brain which extends to other areas of the brain over time owing to neuronal death. To study Alzheimer's disease, there are a few neuropsychological tests commonly used, such as Montreal Cognitive Assessment MOCA, Mini Mental State Examination MMSE, and Clinical Dementia Rating Scores CDR, and these were supported by neuroimaging using MRI, magnetic resonance imaging investigations, to evaluate abnormalities in brain structure in Alzheimer's disease patients. Neuroimaging study, T1 beta images from MRI investigation is producing structural MRI images and processing using voxel-based morphometry, which is a computational uh, tool for examining anatomical sections of neuronal cortices and quantifying differences in local concentration of brain tissue mainly gray matter. The gray matter volume loss in brain structure were identified as Alzheimer's disease patients. Meanwhile, uh, T1 uh, together with ball imaging is producing the functional connectivity information of brain using seed-based analysis method, which is useful for the detailed analysis of particular region of interest to measure changes and the relationship between the structural and functional and to reveal the functional connectivity of resting state fMRI. Our problem statement in this study, people with Alzheimer's disease will have memory loss and other cognitive abilities that are serious enough to interfere with daily life activities. It is important to study earlier on the brain regions and gray matter volume as well as the regional functional connectivity that can help to improve the understanding of the disease to delay its onset or even to prevent it from developing. Our objective in this study, we aim to describe the processing of structural MRI data using VBM that can help to detect the differences of regional gray matter volume in AD patients compared to healthy control and secondly, to identify the differences in functional connectivity of resting state fMRI in AD compared to healthy control, which is pilot study conducted in Klang Valley, Malaysia. Our research limitation, currently we have small sample size and we're looking towards expanding the process so we can test it on more samples in the future. From the literature review, the gray matter atrophy was specific to an increased risk for Alzheimer's disease. As you can see in the images, comparison between normal brain and AD, no, AD patient, which you can see the gray matter uh, volume is decreased because of the brain atrophy. The brain is shrink and become atrophy. Neuroimaging study T1 weighted images from magnetic resonance imaging MRI investigation were used to evaluate abnormalities in brain structure. As you can see in the images, comparison between the normal and abnormal brain, which you can see the atrophy of the brain at the abnormal site in the middle area. When structural MRI images were processed using VBM, 
the gray matter volume loss in brain structure was identified in Alzheimer's disease patients. As you can see, the right is a slightly component how to process the BBM. The seed-based analysis method is useful to detail analysis of particular region of interest to measure changes and the relationship between the structural and functional and to reveal the functional connectivity of resting state fMRI. This is our research methodology. Uh, after getting ethical approval in phase one, we do the retrospective data, which we find the record from these three hospital and clinic uh, to find out patient socio-demographic data and clinical data. Then we can recruit patient for healthy control and Alzheimer's disease. In phase two, we, we categorize the patient by using the neuropsychological test, MMSE, MOCA, and CDR. After we find out whether the patient is healthy control or AD, then we proceed with the resting state fMRI. Resting state fMRI, which patient is doing the scanning in MRI without any task. Uh, patient just lying down and scan with the with the brain is in rest condition we scan for the t1 to look at the structural mri and we scan for ball imaging to look at the resting state fmri after that the image that we get we do the data analysis using the matlab software in a matlab software we uh, do the spm 12 for, vo for volume best morphometry and uh, contour box for functional connectivity. For the rest of neuropsychological tests, we test and we compare and the uh, independent variable, we, can, we compare using the SPSS. This is our conceptual framework. Uh, from the start, we collect the independent variable age, gender, educational level, and marital status from the clinic and hospital that selected for our study. And then we do the test, the, these three type tests, neuropsychological tests, and then we recruit patients for Alzheimer's disease and healthy control. Then we perform the fMRI for structural MRI and resting state FMR, FMRI functional activity. So this is our workflow in image processing analysis. From the MRI scan data, uh, structural and functional images, we send the, the, the images to the our computer that we install the MATLAB software to read the SPM12 software for VBM and analysis, statistical analysis, parametric mapping which we do the image alignment, slash timing, correction, and smoothing. And then we also install the control box software for brain, uh, to find out the brain activation area, which are the functional connectivity in the brain area. This is the software that we use to read our image from MRI, which we call it as MATLAB. And then we install the SPM12 to do the image processing, first level and second level analysis. And then we per perform the volume-based morphometry, which we identify the area uh, have the activation in the brain uh, for the Alzheimer's disease patient and healthy control patient. After we process the T1 structural images in uh, VBM, volume-based morphometry, we can find out the area that activated during the uh, study. So the area of the activated during the study, we put in the T1 and structural and functional images into contour box. We merge it to see which other network are connected to the area. This is our research finding from our demographic data. We divided into Alzheimer's disease and healthy control. Age of the study from both category groups is from 58 years old until 80 years old. And for the gender, each category have two male and one female. And for the education level, both groups have more than six years education. And for the married, both groups 
a married person. This is the result from neuropsychological test scores, which we have for six subjects, three from Alzheimer's disease patient and three from health, healthy control. Uh, from uh, the first subject in AD, we found in MOCA MMSD as normal test score, but clinical dementia rating scores specifically stated that this patient and the rest of the AD patient got moderate and severe dementia, which a normal patient as a healthy control in all the uh, assessment, uh, the, all the neuropsychological tests score as normal. This is the result from our vo volume-based morphometry. Uh, we compare AD group more than HC group and HC group more than AD group. We reduce the p-value uh, 0 0.05 to less than 0 0.001 family-wise error corrected to get the signal because our sample is small. And we do the resting state fMRI which the brain activity is uh, not very highlighted in the p-value 0.05. So that's why we reduce the uh, value so we can see the signal area. Uh, in the AD more than HC, we find out that both sides, left and right inferior frontal gyrus, have a significant difference with other brain area. So uh, compared to the HC more than AD, which we don't see any area activated. As you can see in the brain mapping, the yellow area is the area which have the inferior frontal gyrus. Okay, as you can see here, the seat best result uh, from the functional connectivity using contour box, which we compare the AD more than HC, and the area of right and left inferior frontal gyrus have connection uh, to the ACC, anterior cingulate cortex. As you can see here in the yellow area is the IFG and ACC, which at the right side of the images, you can see the network from the IFG to ACC is connecting each other. So uh, this area is affected to the memory, emotions and language. This is the images from volume-based morphometry, which gray matter density, AD more than HC, which you can see the area, the activation area is the right inferior frontal gyrus and left inferior frontal gyrus. This is the seat-based analysis for each subject from Alzheimer's disease and healthy control group which you can see here there is activation is a lot of area which is uh, the z value is zero to one which is minimal uh, value and then difficult to identify by each category but we compare to both uh, group then we can find out that the area is the in the inferior frontal gyrus in both sides This is our finding in seat best analysis, which you can see gray matter density at the more than HC rendered images. The right inferior frontal gyrus and left inferior frontal gyrus at a different position of the brain. In discussion, our resting state MRI study using morphological data based on structural MRI images and functional data from resting state fMRI evaluated the intrinsic neuronal activity in subject with AD. We detected individual with AD had decreased for lower GMV at the right and left inferior frontal gyrus. A previous study by Zhang et al. had detected the GMV atrophy in the left IFG that is associated with the severity of cognitive impairment in amnestic mild cognitive impairment which is the prodromal condition of AD. This finding also supported by Ribeiro and Busato, whereby the subject with AD had symptoms of agitation and apathy that correlated with the IFG, and specifically agitation was correlated with reduced GMV in the left middle and inferior frontal cortices and the ACC.
In the seed based analysis, we found the connection between the inferior frontal gyrus IFG with the anterior cingulate cortex ACC in the language network, which was similar to another previous study by Rolls et al. 2020. According to the functional characterization, this area were mostly connected with emotion, cognition, and memory. Increased activity in the SEC anterior cingulate cortex is involved in a number of functions, including emotional processing and vocalization of emotions. It has connection with speech and vocalization areas in the frontal lobes, including broadcast area, which controls motor functions involved with speech production. It was also supported by roles at all that inferior frontal gyrus had increased functional connectivity with SEC in Eddie having depressive symptoms. We've performed a seed-based analysis of the resting state fMRI functional connectivity between inferior frontal gyrus, IFG area with regions of the default mode network, DMN, silence network, and visual network, but with our limitation in sample size, we found there were no significant difference between the groups. Nevertheless, we detected increased functional connectivity between the IFG with the SEC that is part of the language network among the AD compared to HC. In summary, our results accept our hypothesis that there will be altered gray matter volume in brain regions of the brain similar to our priory knowledge. We found the right and left inferior frontal gyrus had reduced GMV gray matter volume and neuronal uh, function in AD compared to healthy controls by using volume-based morphometry and resting state fMRI respectively. Our recommendation in the future is that we can increase sample size and perform correlation statistics between neuropsychological tests in dice with neuroimaging studies, potentially test-based fMRI pertaining to the language network and Emotional processing in Alzheimer's disease needs to be explored. Currently, we perform resting state fMRI, which participants need to be at rest level and scan. We try to find out which brain area was activated during resting phase. We do not give any task to the participant during scanning. Hopefully, in the future, we can scan patient and give activity that can stimulate area in the brain during task-based fMRI. Way forward contribution of research finding for your development, improve knowledge on the characteristics of brain cognitive function that can help improve the management of Alzheimer's disease. There is a lot of new image processing and analysis techniques that can be explored by the new researchers in finding information about brain network and activity. This research is the preliminary findings of brain research in Alzheimer's disease patients there's lots of future works need to be done to investigate further about the brain. The young generation can test new softwares to create the brain mapping data for Malaysian population in the future. This is our reference. That's all from me. Thank you everyone for listening. Have a nice day.